PlayStation 2 discs are some of the easiest game formats to rip as the games are just stored on entirely unencrypted CDs and DVDs. If you've ever wondered, the solid black discs are almost always PlayStation 1 discs, which were CD format and designed to distinguish themselves from computer CD-ROM games at the time. Blue-backed discs were not Blu-rays, despite playground rumors. In fact, they were CD-based games for the PlayStation 2, and the silverish disc games were in DVD format for the PlayStation 2. If the discs have more of a gold tint to them, they're typically dual-layer 8GB DVDs. Despite the blue discs being leveraged in marketing as being a fancy disc just for the PS2, they were just plain old CD-ROMs, and most PS2 games wouldn't even use them as they needed the DVDs for space and features. Since these games aren't encrypted and just use classic media formats, any CD-DVD combo drive from the past, what, 30 years will work, though you obviously want it to be in good shape and reliable. Try buying something used to keep these things out of garbage dumps. If you want something newer, I've been loving this little USB LG Blu-ray combo drive lately. Works for PS1, PS2, and PS3 games and has been a workhorse, though the price keeps going up, which is concerning because manufacturing on these has slowed almost to a halt and tariffs keep affecting it. Any program for any operating system that can make an image from a disk will work here. Over on Windows, I like using ImageBurn to make an ISO from disks in just two clicks. ImageBurn is a free program that can be used to do all sorts of manipulations with your physical disk. You can create images from them, you can burn disk images to other disks, you can make copies of disks, you can pull files off disks, and much more. I do recommend downloading it from Ninite instead of the official ImageBurn website, as the official installer tries to sneak some adware in, whereas Ninite does not do that. Link will be in the description. Old advice says to use slower read speeds with your drive, say 8x speed instead of the full 72x or whatever your drive might support. The, the, the drive speed is also dependent on which format you're reading anyway, so you won't get 72 times speed on a DVD regardless. All of this is to make sure you get an accurate read at the cost of taking a little longer. I have seen newer discussions that say error detection and correction functions built into drives will suffice and that this isn't necessary anymore, but if you want to make sure you're getting the best rip possible, maybe you want to slow it down. Once you have your ISO, you're free to burn a new copy, open it up in PCSX2, or put it on a hard drive for use in OPL with a soft modded PS2. I've got videos on that in the description. This can be done on Linux super easy with the terminal. Make sure you have your CD or DVD mounted. Find the slash dev slash whatever your drive is, and then open up a ter terminal in the folder you want to do it in. The command is dd if equals slash dev slash whatever your CD drive is and then OF equals and your file name, and it'll just make an ISO. Over on Mac, you can do the same thing with the built-in disk utility. You put in your disk, make sure it's mounted, go to disk utility, find your disk drive and your disk, right-click it, make image from disk. Now here you need to go to the drop-down on the type and choose CD slash DVD master. Now once this is done, it's actually gonna make a .cdr file because Apple. But all you have to do is actually just rename it .iso. It's the same thing with just a different extension. And then you have a fully functional ISO file. ISO files are optical disk images. It's a disk image that contains everything that would be on a physical disk sector by sector, including the file system which is a great way to have it all contained nice and neat. In many cases, you could treat the ISO file like just a standard zip archive, opening it up in something like 7-zip to extract the files. But doing it that way, you do miss some other, like I said, file system based things when you're trying to make an exact copy. ISO files can be then used to burn back to another disk, to extract the files from, or to mount as a virtual disk and have a pretend DVD mounted in your system, which I used to do a lot back in the day with my older like Windows XP games to not have to swap disks. Here, it's just a digital copy of your physical PlayStation 2 disk. But there is more we can do here. For example, we can try to shrink the size of our game rips so they don't take up as much space. As an example of this, we'll start with an ISO rip of the original God of War. This game rips to a 7.93 gigabyte ISO file on its own. Let's see how far we can squish it. The first method is to convert the ISO to a compressed format, either CSO, CHD, or ZSO. I use PSX ISO linked in the description to convert it to CSO first, which dropped from 7.93 gigabytes of the original rip down to 7.13 gigabytes compressed. That is technically space savings, but not impressive enough to be worth the extra time spent, in my opinion. 
The program didn't work for the other formats for me for some reason. So I swapped to CHD Man for CHD compression, which dropped the 7.93 gigabyte original ISO down to 6.78 gigabytes. Nice. Lastly, I used ZISO.exe to compress to .ZSO compression, which dropped the 7.93 gigabyte rip down to 7.82 gigabytes. Not much there. The only one of these worth spending the extra time on with this one specific not all-encompassing example, mind you, is the CHD format, which did have some significant space saving available if space savings is a crucial thing for you to need. Hard drives are cheap these days, though. I'm coming back to this as I wasn't happy with my original example. I did some more experimenting with CHD Man and found that you can get incredible results, actually. Using dot slash CHD Man, create DVD, dash I, your ISO file name, dash O, CHD file name, manually for testing here. My new examples, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 starts out with a 4.33 gigabyte standard DVD rip but compresses down to an insane 991 megabytes as a CHD file. Less than a fourth of the original size. What? Devil May Cry goes from 4.37 gigabytes down to 1.71 gigabytes. Warriors Orochi goes from a 2.49 gigabyte rip down to just 1.13 gigabytes, less than half of the size still. Champions of Norrath is another 8 gigabyte game, well, 7.74 gigabytes, and doesn't compress quite as well, dropping to 5.48 gigabytes. But that's still more than 2 gigabytes saved, which is enough to cover a full game with smaller files. Lastly, I passed through Gauntlet Dark Legacy, which is actually a CD rip instead of DVD, so I had to use the create CD command instead. It went from a 679 megabyte rip with the bin and Q files down to a 505 megabyte single CHD file which is decent, if far less significant than the others. So I think I've changed my mind. I think if you have the time, these compression tools are absolutely worth using, and I'm probably doing it on my entire emulated library. And remember, these are lossless compression settings. These are not, like some of the other compressors will do some funky stuff with the video and audio, like I'll mention in a moment, like this is completely lossless. You lose nothing here. You may have more issues with these on physical PS2 hardwares, but for the emulator, perfect. These files will all work with PCSX2 and be ready to play. There are additional tools to try to delete junk data from the disk or even further compress videos within games, but I don't really recommend these as the space savings will be minimal while the impact on the game's stability or quality could be massive. The most reliable and widely supported path is to just keep the original ISOs and use them, but these are options available to you. Get to ripping and enjoy your games on your terms however you like. I have a few PCSX2 setup videos on the channel linked below and more on the way. Remember to be kind. Rewind.